right, welcome to my garage. Um, today we've got the Mitsubishi Mini Cab in the garage. Now, I know a lot of my friends tell me I should be working on that thing, but this is actually supposed to be my daily driver. It's been sitting for about two months though. A little while ago, I hopped into the thing, tried to fire it up in the morning, nothing at all. It was pissing rain out, it was cold, I did a real quick diag on it, found it didn't have any spark at uh, number one cylinder, figured I would take off the cap and have a look. Now I'm gonna show you what I actually ended up doing. Again, it was cold, raining, miserable. I was pissed off and I made a decision that I immediately regretted after. I broke the bolts off the dizzy cap. So I couldn't do any further diagnostic on it and it took two months to get these parts in. So they finally arrived and that means today we're going to try and install them and hopefully the truck will run again. The two minute job is not going to be a two minute job. I can't get this dizzy to budge. It is completely stuck in here. I've soaked it down with croil, tried hammering it. I can move it with the uh, with a brass drift, but not a hope I can move it by hand. I tried getting in behind it from underneath, uh, get a pry bar on it, there's nothing. So I'm just gonna let it soak for a little bit here and uh, Try again, maybe the oil will get in a little bit deeper, but now I see why the bolts broke off so easily on the dizzy cap. that did it. You can see the heavy corrosion all around this o-ring here. It looks like that's what was holding it in. So I'll try to clean that up and somehow I'm gonna have to figure out a way to remove these things. Not quite sure how I'm gonna do it yet. So here's the new cap and the old cap. This one's what came off the truck. So obviously we had the broken bolts that had to be dealt with. But uh, see inside, all of this crap here is actually coming off of the 
pickups. So it was in pretty rough shape, obviously. And uh, if you look at the rotor, you sort of see the same thing. So that's the new rotor going on, but the old one, see it really wasn't making much in the way of contact there. The uh, main pickup, the spring is pretty worn out. And I also noticed that it's actually cracked right here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to put these uh, new ones onto the Dizzy and then we'll get it back in the truck and hopefully that's all that the problem was. Uh, if not, we'll be doing a little bit more Diag. I guess that was wishful thinking, but uh, this is pretty much what I expected. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check for spark again, and uh, now at least it's inside in the garage and I can spend a little bit more time on it. Okay, so we still got no spark. I might have to commandeer some help to check uh, the coil. And that's what we'll test next. Nothing. So next thing I'm going to try to do is access the coil and uh, just see if we've got power there. And we'll just keep on working our way back until we find where the uh, loss of power is, hopefully. meter in there might need to pull the lock out. Well shit. <laughs> okay, I guess we're hunting for that in a minute. Went zero eight volts. Well that's not right. So I think that means we're probably tracking this wire back to see what's going on there. Unfortunately, I don't have a wiring diagram for this, so it means that I need to ring out these wires manually to the fuse block. All right, so the wires I got here, looks like a black and white trace, and just a white wire. I'm gonna try to trace it back to the fuse block here. And See if we can't find where it leads to. Doing a continuity test, basically all of these top wires here and a couple of the bottom ones all ring back. So I can assume that that means the whole thing is on a bus and likely should be 12 volt. But coming back here, again, it's a white wire and uh, a black and white wire. Which is also what connects up the distributor itself. You take a look. It's pretty corroded. Like, really corroded. And I am getting 
12-ish volts here, but not not consistent. It kind of depends on where I probe on the plug. So what I'm going to try to do is clean these things up and uh, see if maybe we're just not getting uh, a fire signal from the distributor just because of this corrosion. Hopefully. Not getting my hopes up yet though. together and uh, see if it'll actually start. Well, that's annoying. Okay, I'm just gonna double check the firing order on this thing. And in hindsight, I probably should have marked the uh, plug wires a little bit better. I marked number one and for whatever reason didn't mark two and three before I took them off. So. Now we gotta make sure that this thing is turning the direction that I think it's turning. Okay, so we're going anti-clockwise, but I still don't know what the firing order is actually supposed to be on this thing. So, now we've got one here, and I don't know if it's supposed to be one, three, two, or one, two, three. For that matter, I don't even know if that's supposed to be one up there or the other way, because this isn't key. I'm just gonna put this to top dead center and see where this thing faces. Okay, so I can't find any timing marks on the crank anywhere, um, or even anything to line said timing marks up to. So we're going to find TDC, kind of the old school way, pull number one plug, and then we're just going to take something and shove it down the hole. And what we're looking for is for this to stop moving up or down, and that means we are at top dead center. So somewhere roughly around here. Okay, so with it at top dead center, or at least as close to top dead center, you can see that the dizzy is pointing up, which means if we put the cap on, that has to be number one. Okay, and judging by how tightly the wires are pulled, that does look correct, so I'm going to throw that plug back in and try once more, I guess. <sighs> Here's where we're at. Pulled number one again to have a look, and it was soaked in gas, so I know that the, the engine's flooded, but now what I've run into, I'm just going to do it with this because doing it by hand doesn't make a difference here. And number three is doing it too. The spark plug is turning, but it doesn't come out. Neither two or three. So that can only mean had the previous owner cranked them down so tight they stripped up the cylinder head. So I'm guessing that's probably why it's not starting. I assume it probably has no compression in two and three. Took a bit of a break from the truck for last night because uh, honestly my patience was really running out. Um, let the truck sit overnight and uh, try to get some ideas from some friends. They suggested, which makes sense, pull the valve cover, see if I can get better access to it. Um, don't really think it's going to help me a whole lot, but uh, it was what I was going to try to do. However, the reason I was pulling the plugs in the first place was because the engine was flooded. Now the truck had been sitting overnight, so I figure it's probably, uh, at least for the most part, dried out in there. And uh, I noticed something when I started to crank it over. So 
I have the intake off. And I noticed it was coughing out of the intake while I was trying to crank it. So that's normally a pretty good indication that the timing is off. Now, being that I had marked the timing, chances are that was in the right location. So that got me to thinking, when I check TDC with the screwdriver, normally I have the valve cover off and I look at the valves to make sure I'm actually on compression stroke. I didn't do that this time, so I have no idea what stroke I was on or whether I was actually at TDC. Because when I pulled the distributor off again, this thing doesn't clock. So you can easily install it 180 degrees out and it'll go in with no problem. So I pulled it out, flipped it back around, and I'm willing to bet now that if I try crank it, I bet you it starts. <laughs> All right, well, it's running, albeit a little bit smoky. Um, I'm still gonna have the problems with the spark plugs eventually, but right now it's running. I'm just gonna leave them alone, and when the time comes to deal with the spark plugs, I'll probably just pull the head, do the timing belt, and do the uh, head gasket at the same time, deal with it then. So for the time being, at least the truck's back on the road. So hopefully that's it for this guy for a little bit, and. Uh get back on to one of the other projects that's been sitting waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> Till next time.